So Maker Speedrun is all about being able to design, build, manufacture and sell a product as quickly as possible. Hi, this video is being sponsored by JLC PCB. Not only did they produce all the PCBs in this video, but they sourced almost all the components, apart from a couple that weren't in stock. JLC PCB can manufacture prototype PCBs from one to six layers with track widths down to 3.5 mil. They also support pretty much everything you can throw at them. So check the description below for a list of their capabilities. For only two bucks, you can get 10 PCBs manufactured within 48 hours. And if you are a first time customer, you can get $20 off shipping off your first order. That's pretty cool. So this is the start of a number of videos that I plan to produce this year, and it's called Make a Speed Run. So the general idea is to take uh, the concept of a product and be able to design, manufacture, build, and put up for sale on Tindy uh, that particular product. So it's a bit of a challenge, a bit of an engineering challenge. As you know, a lot of things can go wrong uh, with engineering and there's a lot of aspects you need to uh, take into account. Things like uh, package sizes, uh, tolerances, and also supply chain as well, where you actually get the components from. So this video is going to be produced just before Christmas, within a week, which would have been just enough time to be able to ship uh, those products to people for uh, Christmas. Unfortunately, things didn't really turn out the way I had hoped. So for this first Maker Speed Run Challenge, did I actually manage to meet the goal of producing a product within a week? So what product am I going to make? Well, I was thinking uh, since it's Christmas time uh, and people usually have lots of flashing LEDs, um, I'd make uh, something that you could stick on a Christmas tree, uh, something that you could actually control remotely, uh, something that would be connected either by MQTT or IFTTT, that sounds really cool. So I had some uh, LED strips uh, that I purchased. Uh, these are 300 LEDs at five meters. I reckon five meters is probably enough to cover most of a Christmas tree, I'm a relatively sized Christmas tree. In terms of control, um, I'm going to settle on a Pi, uh, Raspberry Pi Zero W. It's easiest, quickest. Um, I can write software using Golang. I'm a Golang fanboy nowadays. And it'll be all internet connected. So let's do a bit of testing and see what length I can get out of uh, the LEDs before it looks a bit funny. Okay, so I've hitched up an old Raspberry Pi to the LED strip and I'm just using the SPI interface uh, to toggle. It's currently drawing roughly about 700 milliamps all up, so that's pretty good. I'll be able to get a fair amount of hours uh, off a LiPo battery but of course uh, you'll be able to just connect it straight into a 5 volt uh, wall wall. So that's uh, really good. So designing a PCB isn't something that you can actually sort of knock off that quickly. Things that can speed it up uh, is if you've already got some designs already in place. Uh, so for this particular product that I'm making, uh, it's going to have LiPo battery charging. So I'm taking that part from my Pi projector that I designed um, a while back. That took me roughly about half a day to do. So it's now 11.30, that's about right. So let's get stuck into uh, taking that design, putting onto a PCB, uh, ready for um, sending it off to JLC PCB for manufacture. I'll leave all this area. That's already designed, so I can just shift that up and hopefully be able to get away with not having to do too much extra design work, which would be nice. What I could actually do is um, go over to here, then go over to here and do a group rip up, but I don't really want to do that because uh, I might be ripping up some tracks that I actually don't really want to be ripping up. Even though this is a little bit more tedious, I can actually have a bit more control over what tracks I want to be able to rip up. Okay. 
I'll probably regret it later on, but if I can rip up a lot of these things, it'll actually help with uh, shifting it around. I want to get this whole circuit here inside the uh, bounds of the Raspberry Pi. So this is a problem here, the 5 volt line. I'll have to shift it around. So more than likely this will have to go. So it's not really going to fit. Mm. And I gotta be careful of that five volt output. I need to leave room for that SD card. It'd be good to shift that VBUS line out the front where the camera is. The camera sits out here, SD card sits here. Um, so I might shift, get rid of uh, that. Okay, that's looking a little bit better. So I might have to shift it out the front. I don't think I can really fit this in. I might have to ditch the DC jack and uh, add in some screw terminals. Screw terminals are probably going to be a lot better anyway. I probably actually don't need the ITC expander. Just connect it straight into the Pi. Problem is this inductor here, being close to the Wi-Fi chip is probably going to be an issue. So it'd be good to keep it as far away as possible. All right, so I can probably move this down as far as I possibly can, bearing in mind that I can shift the LiPo up a little bit further. I could use a micro USB. I don't really like micro USB because this uh, particular DC buck converter can really push out more current than the micro USB should be able to cope with. Let's uh, switch to the schematic. Uh, let's look for something like header. Maybe terminal. That's probably the right one. So it's a standard five millimeter pitch. That says this is 2.54 millimeters. This is five millimeters. So that's probably what it is. It looks fairly similar. You've got these little connector thingies uh, where you can actually join them together. Always uh, move components out of the way just to make sure they're actually properly connected. And you should be able to see it connect. Now, I don't need any of this. I don't need any of this uh, extra GPIO expander at all. So I'm gonna get rid of it. So this is gonna be, it's gonna be the LED output, five volts. Let me just switch it around. So the way I want it to be is essentially like this. So two is gonna be ground. So I've got two ground points in the middle, voltage in here and you got voltage uh, five volts out. So uh, I know pin one is gonna be five volts, uh, which sort of works out well. So I need to probably move this onto the one page. Uh, so moving a whole component like this, you need to hold down the uh, control key and click the right mouse button and you can just move it into place. Something that's really annoying with Eagle, but hey. So now I've got all those in. Uh, let me do the same thing to these. Just move them into place. Um, and then I can just remove this. Remove sheet one, yep. So it's now down to one sheet, which is good. So this is the tricky thing about designing PCBs, you've got to take into account a whole lot of things. You know, space, where things sit, can be quite difficult, especially when you get down to really the last uh, trace. See, so 5 volts is here, the VBUS in is here. So I could put it like this, 
um, and then have it on the underside, uh, that actually might work because then you've got the uh, LiPo and battery on the underside. So one thing to bear in mind is this layout of the Pi Zero W, this is pin one, so it's actually upside down. The reason why I originally designed, I had it upside down was that enable better routing for the uh, pipe projector. So since this is upside down, all these components are going to be sitting uh, flush with or against the, the Pi Zero W. So these components really need to be upside down uh, on the other side. I think this layout's all right. I probably need to uh, shift everything along a little bit. I'm still concerned about this five volts because it's trying to route things into there. Um, can be fairly tricky. So I've got status LEDs. I can start to move it in back in place again 3.3 uh, volts anymore so let me switch back to the schematic um, I need to change this to 5 volts let's switch back to the board so that's now on 5 volts that's fine this LiPo battery connector should really be on the underside and really should be facing in so that the cable runs along this way uh, for the LiPo battery. Now I've left um, a slight gap there because soldering this is going to be a real bugger if you've got this huge area that's uh, full of copper. So that's left some room for this connector. It's always nice to have uh, lots of ground points. Uh, I need to feed this 5 volts down into here and so <laughs> this is a problem with routing. On this particular Raspberry Pi component I removed the drill holes. So there's two drill holes, one here and one here. Uh, I remove them here because the header really keeps things in place and it shouldn't really be an issue. So that's good because then it opens up more options. Let me just remove the drills. Um, I can potentially feed 5 volts down into here. I need to figure out where I'm going to put these LEDs, where I'm going to put this. So this is the enable for the DC buck converter. So logically that should be over here. Uh, even though it's far away from everything, the most logical spot. If you're powering from this side, you won't ever use this anyway. So it doesn't really make sense to have that over there. Um, it also makes sense to have these LEDs over here. Um, they actually don't have anything to do with this side. So I'm going to move the, the LEDs over this side. But then, you know, where do I put these? Where do I actually put the LEDs? Um, I've got that there, I've got this big huge honking connector there. Um, I could rotate it around like this, uh, but this needs to be accessible. So what I could actually do, which actually might be a better idea, is to just grab charge and have this over here. That sort of makes sense because the charge light will only be used when you're using the DC buck converter and LiPo charger. Uh, and 5 volts will always be used in either case, regardless if you're using power or, you know, whatever. So let me add some copper fill areas, that might be a good thing to do now. Um, now we don't have any um, dimensions yet. dimensions uh, and you'll see it's actually in set but now what I need to do is actually I just bring it in so it's sort of roughly uh, matching that's about right is it 
And now you'll see that the copper fill is, is inset, which is what we want. We don't want to have uh, the copper bleeding out over the edge of the PCB uh, because it can get shorts and all sorts of funky things. Okay, that's good. Um, got two nice big honking ground planes. Oh, actually, so this is a problem. Um, I've got uh, the, the actual ground plane on top. The, the layer needs to be changed. Go to properties. Um, and see this rank? I need to change this rank. And then you'll see it um, pull out away from the, the copper tracks. So that's good. Um, and what I could even do is extend this, the isolation. So if I extend it out to 0.254, you'll see it shift out, which is you know, sometimes pretty good. Hard to do. Uh, there's also thermals. Um, if I deactivate thermals, uh, of course it'll just fill in. So I'll shift all these ground points and just chuck them arbitrarily around the place. Uh, doesn't have to be mm, too accurate, but we want to be able to um, minimize the ground loop problems. So I'm just going to chuck in probably every two two points. Um, I'm going to keep this little cutout because uh, it sort of just helps with Wi-Fi. Well, it's something I found out with, uh, certainly with the Pi projector board. I need to start routing some of these uh, signals. So I've got Enable, which is going to be all the way over here. So I've got uh, Stat 2 coming from the LiPo charger. Stat 1, Stat 2, and oh, that's a uh, power good uh, signal as well. So I've got those three signals coming in there. Next, uh, I've also got uh, LBO. To avoid having to route it all the way down here, I'm just going to route it for simplicity's sake. I'm just going to bring it up and then underneath the PCB and then down to D17. So you can see LBO comes down to here. A nice uh, clean signal. So I might route that first. So one thing I've discovered over the last three years of editing videos is that as soon as I start getting bored editing a video, that's roughly about the right time that people will be getting bored watching the video. So just to avoid you all getting incredibly bored with uh, me routing tracks, let's just fast forward this whole bit. So I need to check uh, the components, a couple of components, I need to check this one uh, and I need to check this one. Uh, to make sure that the physical dimensions are right. Uh, I don't want to put in something that is going to be wrong. I need to check this package here, uh, which is what I've put in is a five millimeter package. This is a standard two header connector this is that I copied from SparkFun. So a lot of these things, they've got the five millimeter, 3.5 millimeter and 2.5. I reckon all I need is 2.5 millimeter. Be nice to have the spring terminals, but I think they might be too big. So I reckon uh, 2.54 millimeter um, screw terminals uh, is probably going to be good. So I can go here, I can just replace the package um, and say 2.54 millimeter screw terminal. And if I go back to the board, I uh, should see it considerably different. Uh, I don't really need a 5 millimeter spacing, it's a little bit ludicrous. Okay, that's looking pretty good. So the next step is to generate the Gerbers. Uh, that's 
pretty easy. You need to go to the CAM processor. I usually take a previous two layer board that I've processed job that I've saved because it has everything all filled up for me. I just process job. And so what I've done there is generate a whole lot of Gerbers. Uh, so if you look at this directory, it's created all these uh, Gerber files, uh, which are these down here. So I can zip those up and go off to JLC PCB and just submit it. And I should have my boards within two days uh, with the 24 hour turnaround time. So let's give that a whirl. Uh, then we need to uh, simply uh, just zip up uh, all the Gerber files. a single zip file uh, which is this one and we should be able to just go to JLC PCB and submit that uh, now because this is smaller than 100 millimeters by 100 millimeters so it's 30 by 65 millimeters so I can actually potentially get three of them within uh, the 100 millimeter area which is nice uh, I can actually panel one of the sides so um, let's uh, times it by three and I get uh, three boards uh, for the same price which is really nice uh, so that's good um, I'm going to save that I'm going to order that now so I'm going to uh, order a stencil as well uh, because really at this sort of price it makes sense to order a stencil along with uh, the PCBs that uh, you're going to make even if you end up actually not using uh, the stencil uh, heck just order a, <laughs> a stencil eight bucks uh, so uh, I'll submit that now it's the time is uh, 6 p.m. on Monday my time and I'll put it through and that's if I can get it 24 hours later then I'll start uh, building some of these boards up and then I'll put it up on Tindy in the weekend